Hey guys, how's it going? Figured I'd finally should get around to showing the innards and such of the ES9000 processor. This little mainframe from IBM from the, oh, the 90s, very late 80s, early 90s. It was pretty low end, obviously. You know, it's, it's, it's not filling the room <laughs> because even back then, IBM was still making mainframes uh, that would literally fill a room. A large water-cooled ES9000. Oh, what a sight to see. Anyway, I've got to settle on a little air-cooled model. Poor me. So excuse the mess, and uh, we'll get right into this thing. So here it is. This is the uh, basically the processor. The processor and the I.O. control and all that. Um, there are no discs or tapes in this particular cabinet. Uh, in this system, the, 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 the discs, the DASD as they're called, were in this, called RAMAC 2. I'll get to that in a different video. But uh, we're just going to show off a, uh, the innards here, kind of go all over the boards and such like that. Uh, okay, well, let's, let's start with the processor proper. Here's the panel. Not much in the way of blinky lights, unfortunately. Yes, I do have the key. Um, whenever you get a machine that has a key lock, the first thing you should do, take the key out. Take the key out, put it somewhere safe, like in your car right away. In fact, that's what I did. Because you don't want to lose it. Sometimes uh, these uh, computer people use the same key, you know, think about DEC and PDP-8s and PDP-11s. They all use that same, what is it, XX2475 or whatever that key is. They all use it. Uh, that's not the case with other manufacturers. IBM always used custom keys. You lose that key, you're in trouble. So, basic controls for basically turning the system on and off. Uh, the whole thing here is is in what's called a 9309 rack. It was a standard. They still sort of use these things. There's the equivalent of the big red switch. That's the emergency power off. Right there. Basically, these are standard, standard racks with this little sidecar. They're very nice. Uh, they're very nice. I like them a lot, but they are a little weirdly sized. Anyway, let's take off. A cover. One of the nice things is the covers pop off really nicely. And they put get put, put back on very nicely. Here we go. This is the processor. Actually, there's a lot less here than you, you see. Why? Because, well, these are power supplies. This is all power supply stuff. Card, card. I think these are redundant power supplies. Uh, we have uh, the uh, channel... Um, basically the I.O. processors, if you will. Um, it's not actually the I.O. controllers. These are just the things to get to the I.O. controllers. I'll show you those. Those are in the back. This is the processing unit. Uh, this is just a blank, probably for you could put a different memory card in. And there's a memory card. Now, unfortunately, there's not much to see on these. Oh, there we go on these cards because they're arranged in books and they're kind of a pain in the neck to get these things open so sorry max i can't show you all the parts i can just kind of do this um there's actually not much in these uh there's a big chip in the middle you can see lots of uh looks like terminator resistors capacitors for bypass and if you kind of look in there a little bit you can see a chip way down in there with a big heat sink like I said, this is an air-cooled one. Um, connector and massive connector with all that grounding. And yeah, the nice thing is uh, with these, I don't know, this feels like magnesium. It's real light. It's got that feel about it. Okay, well, I'll have to put that in. It's one-handed here, so we'll uh, fix that later. Now, one thing I did notice when going through this, this is, this is the memory card. You can kind of see a lot more because it looks like a memory card. There's a mistake. Oh my god, IBM made a mistake. Someone wasn't paying attention. Look at the end of the card. It's warped. 
if you look at how this thing is made, the card sits on those, I don't know, ledges. But when they did the bracket on this side, come on, focus. They didn't get it right, so the card works. I'm surprised that doesn't cause all sorts of problems. I don't know what to do about that. Of course, I, I'm pretty sure I have extra memory cards. Um, I don't know. I may try like putting a spacer in there to unwarp the card, but that just looks scary. And I'm just kind of surprised IBM let that slip through. So I'll get that back in. Like I said, I'll get these buttoned up later because it's hard to do while holding the phone. But you can see there's not a whole lot to see in here. Underneath, that's just air. This guy here, let's get this off. Mostly power supply and blower. This, this is neat. This is a cover. There's actually, I think, another big red switch under there. But for some reason, they don't want you getting to that. I guess I want you to use that one. But yeah, big blowers. More power supplies. Uh, but look at this. It's just stainless steel. It's, it's over-the-top construction. Um, not quite as over-the-top as their, their higher-end ES9000s. Remember, the ES9000 were, uh, were actually a whole family. Uh, two air-cooled models and one water-cooled model. And there were a lot of like sub-models, if you will. And this is the small air-cooled one. The big air-cooled one is a whole lot bigger than this. And then the water-cooled one, like I said, fills a room. Um, but those bigger ES9000s were just way over the top overbuilt. This is pretty darn overbuilt. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at the back. There's nothing to see on the side but white. Okay, in the back here. Actually, a lot more to see, because this is where all the I.O. happens. Once again, this is the 9309 rack. And in that sidecar, you can see very, very typically, you see these power controllers. Various flavors. This one um, has a lot of circuit breakers. Um, this is the back of the uh, CPU. Uh, CPU, sorry. This, this, this is the cable that connects the two chassis. Um, it just kind of gets in the way. Um... This, this is the back of the CPU chassis, and this has like the Meteor I.O. cards. We can see lots of bus and tag. See, bus and tag. And it comes up, these are disconnected, I have to reconnect them. But you can see these just come down. These basically, here, here, those are bus and tag controllers. Block multiplexer, I think, uh, channels. Um... That is nice because this particular machine will uh, has should have something called the uh, System 370 base unit uh, feature code, I believe it's called. And that makes it so you can use all sorts of really cool old 1970s era 370 um, uh, peripherals, like the, the punch card readers and things like that. Um, so that's that's pretty cool. Now, most ES9000s have S-Con. That's what these cards are here. This is a triple and that's a single S-Con. And uh, that was the follow-up to bus and tag. And uh, that's a fiber-based system. And uh, there's obviously no cable in there now, but yeah, they're orange cables with funny connectors. They sort of look like fitty, uh, uh, fitty connectors. Uh, but not quite. Um, but yeah, the, the, in this particular system, the, uh, the discs are connected by... Um, actually, the tape, too, come to think of it, I think, are SCON connected. And uh, the printers and stuff like that were bus and tag. Now, I understand this is a very early ES9000. It's been upgraded quite a few times. Um, so it'd really be kind of interesting to know what, uh, there's an awful lot of bus and tag happening here. A lot. And I think some of it has just been disused for some time. I'm kind of wondering what they had on here, uh, uh, before, you know, the, the final configuration, the configuration that I got. 
But yeah, this this first card here looks to be uh, kind of your general where you stick the console port, and this goes to the power control. It goes winds around here. Um, like I said, this cable here that runs up just connects the two I/O chassis. This is the smaller I/O chassis, and this has a uh, let's just say kind of lesser lesser I/O stuff. We have communication stuff. We have Ethernet. The cool thing about this Ethernet, it actually has like one of these old butterfly telephone company fuses. Um, but uh, yeah, we have a uh, yeah just general bisync and stuff like that. The weird thing is about these cards is how they come out. They are ZIF, Zero Insertion Force. So just for fun, well, ground myself. Let's take one of them out. What you do is you get these little wing nuts and they're captive. And you just give them a quarter turn. Then you go and what do you do? You, you grab uh, these little brown thingamabobs. They, 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 they come out and, and make little rails here for, you know, car, card guides, actually. They're card guides. Then you grab and squeeze and pull. I mean, completely overdone. <laughs> That's why IBM stuff is so great. <laughs> but you can see, very weird. The uh, zero insertion force and the connections are on the side of the card, not on the end and once again it is a real pain in the neck to get into these cards so all i can really do is show you the mm, come on focus you is yeah, we see a lot of dips in there some gator a's kind of very standard construction and then to get the thing back in now uh, this might be kind of fun stick the thing back in the guides and just shove and it clicks and i'll do that again see it, it just if you just give it a click it clicks you bend these card guides back up they snap into position and the wing nuts here just give it the quarter turn and hopefully it engages okay this one's being difficult there, just like that. But very weird system. Very weird, overcomplicated system. But hey, that's IBM. But yeah, these are the I.O. cards. There's probably more I.O. cards in here than the, the final system actually needed. Because like I said, I think there were some, some, some peripherals of the past that are no longer with us as they didn't need them. Um, you know, that big Ramac 2 array... Yeah, that probably, I wouldn't be surprised if that took out, uh, I don't know, 3390 or something, or pair of 3390s or something like that. But uh, there we go. And uh, yeah, you could put all sorts of interesting uh, cards in here. I don't have a huge variety in this particular machine. Now, I do have, like here, this is, this is one of my kind of parts unit uh, ES9000s. This one actually has an Eintracht tape in it. And um, there is the uh, the control card, which is kind of like one of these. Got a different number, of course, and different electronics. But I could probably transfer over that tape drive. You know, it's a front-loading nine track. Uh, who made those? I think that's actually an HP underneath, isn't it? I don't know. And stick it into here. And hey, then I'd have a uh, a nine track tape drive on this thing. So I may actually end up doing that. All right, well, sorry it took me so long. Business has been uh, kind of slow, so I would really had to pour the coal on to, to <laughs> move a little bunch of stuff out the door. And, of course, that means videos aren't being made. So I'm going to try and get back into it. So leave a like if you will. Share it. I could use some shares. Share the video around. And uh, maybe subscribe. Uh, feel free to comment. And, yeah, if, if I may have some things wrong. If you're an ES9000 guru out there, let me know if there's more information I need or if I get anything wrong because I have a somewhat limited experience here. All right. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.